In the last video, I got a ton of questions about different cones and whether the cone winder can support the cones that you guys already have sitting at home. So I wanted to make this video to sort of explain that because it isn't a simple yes or no. You can see right here, there's a lot of different cones that I've got that I'm experimenting with. And I sort of want to go through how cones fit onto this cone winder so that you can sort of better understand which kinds of cones will be able to work and what you'll need to do to make different kinds of cones work with this uh, cone winder once I get to that step. But in general, I'm still working on sort of the base functionality, so I'm not actively working on this, but since there are a lot of questions about this, I sort of wanted to ease people's minds and sort of explain, yes, it will support a bunch of cones. It can't probably support all the cones out there. Uh, certainly there are a few kinds that it won't be able to support. So first off, as I explained in the previous video, the way this cone winder works is this drum rotates this cone and then the yarn will go back and forth. So one limitation is that the cone basically needs to be wide enough or long enough to accommodate sort of from this point to this point. Now this is a standard drum, so it's gonna work with standard size cones. So most of the cones I have here will work with it. But let me show you an example of one that I have that won't work. So here's a cone that just, it won't work because it's, it's just not gonna be long enough. The yarn would go past the ends and cause tangles. So if you have any of these half length cones, then it will not work with this. However, all the other cones I have here are actually long enough to work with these drums. But there, there are some additional limitations that I wanna point out. So the way that the cone fits into this device is this comes off and then you slide the cone on. So this is one I've 3D printed that's exactly the right size. However, I've realized rather than making my own cones, what I should be doing is I should be taking sort of industry standard cone that will work with this device. And right here you can see one, two, three, four. These are four different standard size cones. Every one of these is pretty different, but um, these are four standard cones and these are ones that I'm gonna experiment working with. I know that all of these will work. I'll have to redesign some of the parts to make it work, but I think I'm going to pick one of these to work with the cone winder and I can get these much cheaper then I could actually make my own cones and then I'll be able to sell. I'm, I'm thinking that the cone winder will probably ship with 10 and I'll, I'll sat, sell batches of 10. And I don't know the exact price of these cones, but they'll be very affordable. So the primary limitation that's going to exist in cones that are the correct length is whether this bearing can fit through the end like this. So for example, these cones are designed for a different kind of machine and I'm, you're not going to be able to get these. Now, there is a tiny hole there, and perhaps we can come up with a way of making these cones work as well. But in general, that kind of a cone is not gonna work. Also, this one, just slightly too small of a hole, so that one doesn't work either. But, you know, other than that, most of the cones here will work. Like this one, it does fit, so here's a paper cone. Now I have to adjust the design a little bit. Let me go back to one of these that I'm looking into actually supporting. So if you look at these, like this one's a little bit tighter and it doesn't fit. Let's see if I can find a different one that fits a little bit better. Here's one of the cardboard ones and it, it fits decently, but it wobbles a little bit on the inside. So I'd have to adjust the inside of uh, I'd, I'd have to adjust this plastic piece um, to better fit that cone. And I'm planning to make 3D printable files so that people can make different arms or, or different uh, cone holders like this for different sized cones. So that's what you'd have to 3D print. Also, it's not super obvious, but if we look at it from an angle, you can see that these arms are bent and that's basically to accommodate the angle of the sides of the cone. So every different angle of a cone is actually gonna require this arm to be replaced as well. So those are the two 3D printed parts that you'll have to have made if you want to support uh, different cones. 
And if we just put this on there, so this doesn't fit perfectly, but I'm gonna show you that, you know, maybe some of the time it's gonna be close enough. Like, like this one, it works. It doesn't, I don't think this would be good enough, but there's gonna be, you know, I'll make several different 3D printed arm configurations. And with those, I think it'll support most cones. There's always gonna be a few cones out there that aren't gonna work because of the wrong length or because there isn't the right arm, 3D printable arm and spindle. But I think that most people are gonna be pretty happy with uh, the standard cones that, that I end up shipping with it. Right now, I'm trying a bunch of different uh, cone configurations. Um, so like the advantage of the, these were the least expensive of the ones that I tried, and these were the most expensive of the ones I tried, but they are noticeably higher quality. So I need to do some testing with various cones now that I can get manufactured for me in China and sort of see which ones are uh, the best fit for this cone winder. And then I do think, you know, as I said, I'll be shipping it with 10 cones probably, and batches of 10 more cones will be quite inexpensive. One thing I was wondering is, what do people think about cardboard cones? So there are, th these actually came in between these two plastic cones. This one was significantly more expensive. So um, it's, it's definitely not the cheapest. It's not as cheap as some of the plastic ones, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards plastic. They just feel like they'll hold up longer. Uh, and also they're the kind that you can put uh, yarn on and put it in very hot water, boiling water even, and they'll retain their shape. So if you wanted to dye your yarn or something while it's on a cone, with these plastic ones, you could do that. If I did the cardboard ones, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So if you have any feelings on whether it should be cardboard or plastic, let me know. I am leaning towards plastic. It just seems more durable. And like I said, the price actually isn't, I thought that the cardboard ones might be way cheaper, but they're not. They're sort of priced in between some of the plastic options that I'm looking at. And as you can see, I have a lot of cones here, so I'll definitely be making uh, 3D printable parts in the future that you can have made so that you can use it with more cones. But um, initially I'm focusing on just getting these cones to work because I think that's what most people are gonna do. They're gonna just use the standard cones which will work very well with it and they'll be quite affordable. So hopefully that answered most of your questions about how the cones are gonna work with this cone winder I've been working on. And I'm continuing to work on it when I have time. Right now the priority is getting the yarn counter uh, shipped to all of the Kickstarter backers. So this is probably second priority project right now and I'm getting some time put into it, but the uh, Yarn counter is definitely taking up most of my time right now. But as soon as uh, I feel like I have a final prototype, I'll definitely be releasing it onto Kickstarter for you guys and letting people start pre-ordering then. But I don't want to put it out there too soon. I want to make sure that I have a fairly final design so that there's not unpredictable delays in the delivery of the cone winder. I like to have things very far along in the design process and starting to get it ready for manufacturing before I actually put it on Kickstarter.